Hi, and welcome to Focus RE, the new data analytics tool for reservoir simulation that we've been developing here at Petroleum UX. Now, at Petroleum UX, we aim to be recognized as a high standard software provider that focuses on global exploration and production engineers and their user experience. We aim to bring to the market high productivity platforms to accelerate business decisions and EMP processes. Now, we believe it's your job to make decisions and not wrangle with complex plot settings. Sorting data should be easy and quick. Post-processing should be a simple, fast and ready for use process. Exporting and reporting should be compatible with various different tools and easy to replicate. Now, ironically, these are some of the most time consuming tasks you will face in your daily workflows. Data selection and preparation is often a slow and tedious process. A lot of the so software that is available tends to be very feature driven and therefore complex workflows are often required for very simple tasks. Also due to this feature driven nature of some of the available softwares, the performance is often lacking. And all of this leads to a broken workflow between your analysis and your business decisions. So the solution we came up with was to provide a platform with interactive graphics, smart data context selection, allowing you to easily extract usable data at the click of a button, compatibility with various different other tools that might focus on other processes, features to allow for the easy ranking and visualization of your KPIs, the ability to export, export ready-made plots, graphs and figures to various different platforms, and the tool itself is responsive, meaning you don't have to sit around and wait for operations to finish before the tool becomes usable again. We also wanted it to be intuitive and easy to learn whilst maintaining a high level of performance. So, without further ado, let's jump straight in. At the moment, I have the Volve model loaded that was made public by Equinor. And the first platform you will see when you load up your model is this. You have four workspaces here and various different quantities, some of them that are standard, such as your production rates, production ratios, history matching, production totals, etc. Now you can also select any vector that you might have initialized in your summary section, either via this drop down list or by keying in the appropriate keyword. So, for example, if I want to have a look at my original oil in place, we can see that we had about 22 million standard cubic meters of initial oil in place. And by the final time step, it was reduced by about 10 million. We can then also, of course, have a look at our recovery factor, which should be around 45%. Additionally, if I select my water injection rate and I change this vector to my oil production rate, I can then, of course, have a look at the pressure responses in the reservoir with my injection and production rates. So, if I go to production rates, for example, as a quantity and then double click on this line from the oil production rate graph, it will then drill down into the next ID class, which is groups. Now, I happen to know that the group PJ1 is a culmination of all of the other five groups and hence reflects the field level production rate. So for the time being, I'm going to deactivate PJ1. What I can then do, of course, is stack my plots. And then if I hover on any of the plots for the subsequent groups, you can see on the well location map on your right hand side the different wells being highlighted that corresponds to those groups. If I return back to normal, I can of course rank my groups as well. Uh, if we rank them according to cumulative oil and then select the quantity production totals. And lastly, move the time slider to the final time step we can see the ranking of our groups in terms of cumulative oil production. Now we can see that SRAR is our highest producing uh, group. So let's go ahead and rename this cluster to groups. 
I'm going to go ahead and lock it. And what this allows me to do is if I make any changes to my ID section, even if I go to a different section entirely, whenever I go away from that cluster and return, those groups that I had highlighted will still be there. So I'm going to duplicate this cluster and then what I'm going to do is double click on the well, uh, the group SRAR. That drills down into the next ID class, which is all the wells that correspond to SRAR. So let's rename this group, uh, data cluster to SRAR and we'll go ahead and lock it. I'm also going to, well, first of all, what we can observe here, since we already have it ranked as cumulative oil on the final time step, we can see that the well PF15C highlighted on the well location map is clearly underperforming. So let's have a closer look at uh, well PF15C. If I duplicate this cluster once more and then select well PF15C and return to my performance view, and also then renaming that cluster to PF15C, I'll go ahead and lock it and then go to my production rates. And we can see there's only a bit of production during the early 2009-2010 period. So also reservoir volume production rate as a vector uh, does not display anything on a well level. So I'm going to unlock this quantity, allowing me to make some changes to my plots. So I'm going to choose bottom hole pressure in this case. And let's also see if we have any historical data. We do. Now we might want to do some further analysis on this well. Uh, so let's export all of the data and the graphs straight to Excel. So if I go to export, other and then Excel, we'll go ahead and export this. We'll export it to the desktop and call it Volv PF. 15c. While that loads, I'm also going to return to um, SRAR as a group, I'm going to deactivate my historical data, and I'm going to return to a ranking view. And under the production totals quantity, we're going to also copy all of the data just from this single plot to the clipboard. So, bearing in mind that's all copied to the clipboard, let's open our exported Excel spreadsheet then, where we have now all four of those vectors that we initialized. So, oil production rate, gas production rate, water production rate, and bottom hole pressure exported. You can also see that all the simulated data, as well as the historical data, has been exported together with an interactive plot. So, keeping in mind that we have some copied data on the clipboard. Let's create a new sheet and we call it ranking. If I now paste that copied data, you can see all of it there. And then lastly, returning to Focus RE, I can also copy the graph. And I'll paste it right next to it. I'll then go ahead, save the spreadsheet, and I can always return to it at any, at any other point to do some further analysis. Now, going to a fourth cluster and returning to the performance view. With SRAR, we had a look at these southern wells. So what if we want to also have a look at some of these northern wells? So in the second cluster, I'll go to the well ID and zoom in on my map a little bit. And then using this pencil drawer, I'll encircle these northern wells. I'll also minimize the map so that I have a bit more space to work with. Going to production rates, we can now see again oil production rate, gas production rate, water production rate, and bottom hole pressure. I'll also reactivate my historical data, and then we might want to export all of this to PowerPoint for a report. So, instead of exporting these four plots the way they are to PowerPoint, I'll start by exporting uh, each ID to its own individual slide. This just allows me to export each well to each individual slide. 
So I'll go ahead and do that. We'll call it Volve Northern Wells. I will go ahead and save it. And while that exports, what I'm also going to do is I am going to copy these four plots because perhaps we do want all of the uh, various wells plotted on the same graph. And also while we wait, I will also sum up all of these individual wells so that we can have a look at how they produced cumulatively. And there we go, our exported PowerPoint. And as you can see, each well individually exported to its own slide, including a few of the injectors, which is why you might see a lack of production on some of them. So if I add a new slide, bearing in mind that I've copied those plots, we can see that after pasting them, all of my wells are now also plotted on the same uh, graphs. So I'll return to Focus RE and also copy it while they're accumulated. So I'll copy these plots, return to PowerPoint again, add a new slide and paste it there as well. And then lastly, what I'll do is returning to my normal view, I will just rank my wells as well, just for some clarity. So we're already on the final time step and we're already uh, ranking according to cumulative oil. So I'm going to copy just this single plot. And then right at the very top, I'll add one last slide and paste it. I'll then save my PowerPoint and I can return at any point to do some editing. So returning to my performance view, it's worth noting as well that in the settings section, you can hook up your text editor. And what we tend to use is ResinSight, a open source uh, 3D visualization tool, which allows you to then right click on your model or your case and then open a 3D grid or any of your text files, such as your data files. Of course, what you can also do is you can use the rubber band zoom option to zoom in on any of your plots. And you can, of course, apply that zoom to all four of your plots as well. You can resize your plots to have a, a larger view of whichever vector you want to be working with. And of course, you have the ability to drag and drop your plots in various different positions, whichever way you might prefer them. So what I'm going to lastly do is we'll save this project and I'll show you a bit of how uh, Focus RE deals with multiple realization cases. So we'll just save it to the desktop. We'll call it Evolve Focus RE. And then I can close it. Now, what I'm going to start out by doing when we're having a look at some multiple cases, I'm going to just upload one for the time being, this DOE 2120. This, of course, is the uh, Unison models. Um, they're based on a Brazilian oil field and is also uh, public data. Now, I've uploaded it this way. I could have uploaded all of them at the same time. But what I'm going to do is, since I want to keep my cases fairly well uh, numerically organized, I'm going to drag and drop all of the cases labeled 20. Ooh, we already have this one. And we'll just drag and drop it. I'll do the same to the cases labeled 19 and the case is labeled 18. And then of course, all the remaining cases of which there are plenty, I will just drag and drop them in as well. And then we'll give it a moment for focus already to load them all up.
And as you can see, well, Focus already loads them up very quickly and you can already start using the tool again, even while it's still uploading. So starting at the very top, all my cases that I labeled a 20, I'm going to select them all. And as you can see, they're colored differently at this point, according to the case colorings. And of course, I can change that. Now, what I can do is I can apply any setting change to all of the highlighted cases and I'll change the color in this case to black. And then the cases labeled 19 will do the same and we'll make them blue. And then lastly, for the cases 18, we'll add a dash of red. And now what I can do if I select all of those cases, we can clearly define which base case has been used, the 20, the 18, or the 19. So I'll rename my cluster to DOE18220. And I'll go ahead and lock it. And then going to a second cluster, of course, we can have a look at all the remaining cases. We scroll down to the bottom, select them all, and look how quickly Focus RE plots them all. Uh, of course, reservoir volume production rate in this case is not uh, active, so we'll choose our water cut. Now, we'll also move on to our wells, and I'm going to choose, let's say, NA1A, NA2, and NA3D. And as you can see, they no longer color it according to the case colorings. It shows the well colors instead. Now you can change that, of course. Well, of course, you can change the colors of each one of those wells. So we can make it orange, for example. Or what you can do is you can go to your graphic settings and change your coloring preferences to the simulation cases. And when you go away and return, all of those cases that you have highlighted will now be colored according to the case colorings, uh, as well as uh, plotting all three of the different wells. But in this specific case, I think that's a bit messy, so I'm going to return to my ID coloring. And there we are. Now, water cut does not seem to be active at a well level, so I'll choose the bottom hole pressure. And then lastly, what we might want to do is export as much of this data as possible. Now, I suspect that my Excel might have a problem with the amount of columns available, as I still use an old version of Excel, but let's have a look. Call it Unisim uh, Cases. And we'll go ahead and save it. Yeah, as I mentioned, my Excel is a bit of an older version, so it has a bit of a problem with the amount of uh, data it can export. But either way, let's have a look at what eventually does come out. still loading up and there we go and of course as you can see again the interactive plot with all of the exported data for each one of the cases and each one of the wells So, in a nutshell, I've shown you some of the main features that uh, Focus RE possesses, such as our KPI ranking system, and the various different ways with which we can visualize and plot our data, and the different ways with which we can export that data, and the different platforms we can export it to. I've also shown you how the well location map uh, cooperates with your data, and the ability to export a three-dimensional view as well as uh, your, your data files, or open them um, straight from Focus RE. I've shown you how quickly Focus RE deals with multiple realization workflows, and how quickly it can plot all of those different cases, as well as upload them. 
and within 2019 we still aim to make Focus RE fully compatible with various different uh, business intelligence tools such as Power BI and Spotfire uh, in order to smooth uh, some of the the uh, workflows between your your post processing and your business intelligence dashboards. We're also working on a generic plotting module that allows you to select uh, various vectors on your X and Y axes and to tailor your plots to your individual preferences and plot different vectors on the same plot. We're also working on a KPI calculator allowing you to calculate your preferred KPIs and export them into a format that is compatible with business intelligence tools. Lastly, we're developing a scenario manager allowing you to generate cases and manage your multiple realization workflows. We want engineers to reduce the amount of time spent on features and functions and increase the amount of time making decisions. We aim to have Focus RE compatible with various open uh, um, or, or commercial and non-commercial uh, tools that might focus on different uh, processes in order to uh, smooth the transition a little bit between the workflows um, from various different tools. Now, as you can see, over the first few years, uh, we were predominantly focused on performance and as our performance started stabilizing we started adding some more modules and I've also shown you some of the modules we add, uh, plan on adding within the next few years. We'd like to invite you to partake in our beta testing phase and help us make Focus RE into a great tool for the Reservoir Engineers user experience and help us make the daily tasks simple, fast and efficient. Currently, we are located, myself, here in the UK. We have a representative in the US, Colombia, as well as Malaysia. So we're kind of all across the board. Thank you very much and get in touch.